Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is variable resistors. Our objective is to take a close look at a three-terminal variable resistor known as a potentiometer. Even with a dizzying array of standard size resistors available, you're sometimes less scrambling for a particular size. As an exercise to the viewer, I invite you to go ransack your school supply room for a 140 ohm resistor. Go ahead, tell them I told you it was okay to do so. You'll quickly realize that a 140 ohm resistor isn't commonly available inside the standard size set, and you'd have to resort to some level of trickery to accomplish the desired task. Given that resistors are manufactured with a specified tolerance, you might be able to paw through a roll of plus or minus 10% tolerance 130 or 150 ohm resistors, the next lowest and the next highest standard resistors available, and find an unusually high 130 ohm or an unusually low 150 ohm that exactly satisfies the 140 ohm requirement. Additionally, one could in effect create a 140 ohm resistor using various combinations of series and or parallel configurations. For example, we could place a 120 ohm resistor in series with a 20 ohm resistor for a total resistance of 140 ohms. Or we could place two 270 ohm resistors in parallel in series with two 10 ohm resistors in parallel. The two 270 ohm resistors in parallel have an effective resistance of 135 ohms and the two 10 ohm resistors in parallel have a resistance of 5 ohms. Taken in series, 135 ohms plus 5 ohms yields the desired total resistance of 140 ohms. It should be evident that numerous other combinations of standard side resistors could also yield 140 ohms of resistance. For example, you could take 7 20 ohms in series, or if you had the patience, 141 ohm resistors in series, all with an increasing level of annoyance and busy work it would be far more desirable to use a single variable resistor in which you could dial it into the exact value you require. This device is known as a potentiometer, sometimes known as a rheostat depending upon application. Informally, they're known as pots, trimmers, or a combination of both, trim pots. A potentiometer is a three terminal device. The two outside terminals, A and C, represent the beginning and end of a fixed conductive path with a constant resistance. The A2C resistance is the nameplate value of the potentiometer. Regardless of the status or position of the B terminal, the A2C resistance remains a fixed constant value. For example, a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer always has 1 kilo ohm of resistance from terminals A to C. The schematic symbol for potentiometer reveals the purpose of the middle lead B. It is a midway station on our journey from A to C. What's super handy about this midway station is that the physical position of terminal B is adjustable via a screw, a wheel, a slider, or a knob. This movable B contact is sometimes called the wiper arm because it moves up and down the resistance path from A to C. In effect, by varying the position of the B terminal, we are varying the length of a conductive path. If you recall, length is one of the three main properties that influence resistance in addition to resistivity and cross-sectional area. If the length of a conductive path is increased, the resistance is increased. Conversely, if the length of a conductive path is decreased, the resistance is decreased. Given a potentiometer has a constant resistance from terminals A to C, every time I increase the length of the path from A to B by adjusting the position of the wiper arm, I am decreasing the length of the path from B to C. Can you see where this is leading? The resistance from terminal A to terminal B, RAB, plus the resistance from terminal B to terminal C, or BC, equals the resistance from terminal A to terminal C, RAC. If it helps you understand three terminal potentiometers, you can visualize the internal structure as a pair of series resistors, RAB and RBC, where the total resistance from A to C is the full nameplate value of the potentiometer. If you increase RAB by one ohm, you decrease RBC by one ohm and vice versa. Consider a one kilo ohm potentiometer with a constant resistance of one kilo ohm between terminals A and C. Assuming position of the B terminal is a linear proportional resistance and the B terminal position at 50%, it means half of one kilo ohms or 500 ohms appears between the terminal A and B and the remaining 500 ohms appears between terminals B and C. If however the B terminal wiper arm is repositioned such that 60% of one kilo ohm is a portion of AB and 40% of one kilo ohm is a portion of BC, the resistance from AB is 600 ohms, and the resistance from B to C is 400 ohms. Get it? For every ohm of increased resistance between terminal A and B, there is a corresponding ohm of decreased resistance between B and C 
such that total resistance between A and C remains constant at 1 kilo ohm. Let's put your understanding of this simple concept to the test with the following scenarios. Given a 2 kilo ohm potentiometer with 200 ohms of resistance known to be between terminals A and B, determine the resistance from B to C. Given a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer with 780 ohms of resistance known to be between terminals B and C, determine the resistance from A to B. Finally, given a potentiometer with 200 ohms of resistance from A to B and 300 ohms of resistance from B to C, determine the nameplate value of the potentiometer. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. If 2 kilo ohms appears from A to C and 200 ohms of resistance is known to be between terminals A and B, this suggests the remaining 1.8 kilo ohms appears between the terminals B and C. If 1 kilo ohm appears from A to C and 780 ohms of resistance is known to be between terminals B and C, this suggests the remaining 220 ohms appears between terminals A and B. Finally, if 200 ohms appears from A to B and 300 ohms appears from B to C, the nameplate value of this potentiometer is most likely 200 plus 300 or 500 ohms. Now that we've got a good idea how the position of the B terminal affects how total resistance is apportioned between the terminals of a potentiometer, let's take a look at how potentiometers are employed in circuits. Consider the following circuit incorporating a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer hooked terminal A to C where the B terminal is positioned exactly in the center. Half of 1 kilo ohm appears between A to B and the remaining half of 1 kilo ohm appears from B to C. What is the resistance seen by the source? If you said anything other than 1 kilo ohm, please take the time to viciously slap a wooden ruler across your knuckles. Series resistances add up. The source sees the full resistance of RAB plus RBC, which equals the full nameplate value, in this case, 1 kilo ohm. Although the B terminal is exactly in the center, the B terminal isn't being employed. This is to suggest that no matter how one tweaked, twiddled, dorked, diddled, turned, spun, pulled, or pushed the adjustment screw, or even if you screwed it so hard it fell off in your hand, a potentiometer configured in this fashion would always present a fixed resistance equal to its nameplate value. We'll examine this particular configuration in later lectures on series circuits discussing voltage division. For now, simply realize the customizable nature of the potentiometer resistance isn't being fully realized when wired in this fashion. In order to make a truly variable resistor, one must make use of the central B terminal such that resistance is now a variable customizable quantity. Here's one such circuit that allows this ability. Given the B terminal is adjusted to a 50% position, current travels through only half of the 1 kilo ohm potentiometer and the source sees 500 ohms of resistance. If the B terminal is adjusted such that 75% of 1 kilo ohm appears between B to C, current travels through 3 quarters of the 1 kilo ohm potentiometer and the source sees 750 ohms of resistance. Similarly, if the B terminal is adjusted such that 40% of 1 kilo ohm appears between B to C, current travels through only 40% of the 1 kilo ohm potentiometer and the source sees 400 ohms of resistance. Deployed in this fashion, we've in effect created a two-terminal variable resistor. Sometimes you'll see an ordinary two-terminal resistor schematic symbol that includes a slanting arrow indicating this is a variable resistor. Additionally, you might see a potentiometer wired in this fashion to create a variable resistor. Note terminals A and B are tied together with a zero ohm wire. It helps to understand this configuration if we again visualize the potentiometer as two series resistors, RAB and RBC. If terminal A and B are tied together with a zero ohm wire, we've effectively shorted out RAB. Any current will be routed around RAB, however it must still travel through RBC such that the potentiometer effectively yields a resistance equal to only RBC. Regardless of the schematic employed, stop to consider the consequences of sliding the B terminal from one extreme to the next. Let's say the B terminal is adjusted such that 100% of 1 kilo ohm appears between B to C. At this upper extreme, the source would see 100% of 1 kilo ohm in current might be regulated to a manageable small value. However, if the B terminal is adjusted all the way down such that 0% of 1 kilo ohm appears between B to C, at this lower extreme, the source sees no resistance and current might swell to an uncontrollable, dangerous level. The point is, pay attention and don't drop resistance too low, otherwise you might damage your circuit, your equipment, or yourself. Take your time and think about it. Really think about it. Take your time and think before you act. Don't just randomly push buttons, pull wires, turn screws, 
and hope it works out okay. Moving on, consider potentiometers in the following circuits. In the first circuit, consider a series combination of a 560 ohm resistor and a potentiometer adjusted such that 70% of 1 kilo ohm, or 700 ohms, appears between terminals B and C. In the second circuit, consider a parallel combination of an 820 ohm resistor and a potentiometer also adjusted such that 70% of 1 kilo ohm, or 700 ohms, appears between terminals B and C. See if you can determine the total resistance seen by the source for these circuits incorporating potentiometers at these various settings. Also, for each of these types of circuits, series or parallel, consider the consequences of adjusting the potentiometer to the upper and lower extremes. In this case, an upper limit of 1 kilo ohm and a lower limit of 0 ohms. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. The series combination of a 560 and a 700 ohm resistor is 1260 or more appropriately, roughly 1.3 kilo ohms. Let's now consider the upper and lower extremes for the series configuration. When the potentiometer is adjusted such that 100% of 1 kilo ohm appears in series with the 560 ohm resistor, the series circuit presents a resistance of 1560 ohms or more appropriately, roughly 1.6 kilo ohms. This is the upper limit of resistance achievable for this particular circuit. Conversely, when the potentiometer is adjusted such that 0% of 1 kilo ohm appears in series with the 560 ohm resistor, the series circuit presents a resistance of 560 ohms. This is the lower limit of resistance achievable for this particular circuit. Even with the potentiometer essentially out of the picture, the 560 ohm resistor in series never lets total resistance drop below 560 ohms. This series combination essentially acts as a failsafe to keep at least some level of resistance inside a circuit, thereby ensuring current remains controlled and manageable. Let's now take a look at potentiometers in parallel configurations. The parallel combination of an 820 and a 700 ohm resistor is roughly 377.6 ohms. Let's now consider the upper and lower extremes. When the potentiometer is adjusted such that 100% of 1 kilo ohm appears in parallel with the 820 ohm resistor, the parallel circuit presents a total resistance of roughly 450.5 ohms. This is the upper limit of resistance achievable for this particular circuit. Conversely, when the potentiometer is adjusted such that 0% of 1 kilo ohm appears in parallel with the 820 ohm resistor, the entire parallel circuit is essentially shorted out such that the source sees no resistance. Recall that shorted elements, i.e. 0 ohm paths in parallel circuits, short out the entire circuit such that it presents a minimal opposition to current i.e. 0 ohms of resistance. All current will be routed around the circuit through the 0 ohm short. Before we bring this lecture to a close, let's check out a couple real world potentiometers. Here's an example of an inexpensive 1 kilo ohm potentiometer meant for low power applications and features a small adjustment screw on top. You'll note there is no label clearly identifying the A, B, or C terminals. Not a big deal. We can use an ohmmeter to figure out which terminal is which. When I check the resistance between the two outside terminals, the ohmmeter registers a constant 1064 ohms regardless of how vigorously I turn the screw. These are obviously the fixed terminals A and C, and this potentiometer most likely has a nameplate value of 1 kilo ohms. Let's call the top terminal A and the bottom terminal C. If I transfer one lead of the ohmmeter to the central B terminal, the ohmmeter demonstrates there is 626.6 ohms of resistance between B and C. If I check the resistance between A and B, the ohmmeter demonstrates the remaining 444.3 ohms of resistance appears between A and B. With the ohmmeter positioned in this manner, a couple turns in the adjustment screw changes the resistance between A and B to 380.6 ohms. When I switch the ohmmeter back to B and C, the ohmmeter demonstrates the remaining 691 ohms of resistance appears between B and C. It makes sense. For every ohm decrease on one side, represents a corresponding increase on the other side and vice versa. Here's another example of a potentiometer obviously intended for high power applications. Rather than use an adjustment screw, this device uses a sliding wiper on a track that clearly illustrates the internal functionality of a potentiometer. When I check the resistance between the two outside screw terminals, the ohmmeter registers a constant 106.2 ohms regardless of how hard, far, or fast I drag the wiper along the track. These are obviously the fixed terminals A and C. Let's call the left terminal A and the right terminal C. If I transfer one lead of the ohmmeter to the upper B terminal, the ohmmeter demonstrates there is roughly 63.7 ohms of resistance between B and C. If I check resistance between A and B, 
the ohmmeter demonstrates the remaining 41.8 ohms of resistance appears between A and B. With the ohmmeter positioned in this manner, the gentle slide along the rail changes the resistance of A to B to roughly 78.2 ohms. When I switch the ohmmeter back to B and C terminals, the ohmmeter demonstrates the remaining 27 ohms of resistance appears between B and C. Again, for every ohm increase on one side, it represents a corresponding decrease on the other, and vice versa. Finally, here's yet another example of a potentiometer. Rather than using an adjustment screw or a sliding wiper, this device uses a turning knob. When I check the resistance between the two outer terminals, the ohmmeter registers a constant 5 kilo ohms, regardless of how viciously I twist the knob. These are obviously the fixed terminals A and C, and this potentiometer most likely has a nameplate value of 5 kilo ohms. Let's call the top terminal A and the bottom terminal C. If I transfer one lead of the ohmmeter to the central B terminal, the ohmmeter demonstrates there is roughly 2.8 kilo ohms of resistance between B and C. If I check resistance between A and B, the ohmmeter demonstrates the remaining 2.1 kilo ohms of resistance appears between A and B. With the ohmmeter positioned in this manner, a turn on the knob changes the resistance between A and B to roughly 1 kilo ohm. When I switch the ohmmeter back to the B and C terminals, the ohmmeter demonstrates the remaining 4 kilo ohms of resistance appears between B and C. Again, for every ohm decrease on one side, represents a corresponding increase in the other, and vice versa. Before bringing this lecture to a close, allow me to make a comment about taper, which is the relationship of resistance to position. There are two types of common tapers, one known as linear and the other known as logarithmic taper. For the purposes of this introductory lecture, we've been assuming a linear taper, where there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the physical position of a screw, knob, or slider and the resistance. This isn't always true, because there also exist potentiometers with logarithmic tapers, where every equal movement on the dial represents a resistance of 10 times the magnitude of the previous position. Logarithmic tapers are sometimes called audio tapers because they're commonly found in audio systems. Additionally, potentiometers with logarithmic tapers are sometimes used as position transducers for things like joysticks. We'll examine logarithms in later lectures. Honestly, there's not that much more to talk about potentiometers other than a general reminder to stay organized when you're using them. It is super easy to dial a potentiometer to the exact resistance you need from A to B and then accidentally hook it up B to C and wonder why nothing is working as you'd expect. Once you figure out which terminals are which, stay organized and use those terminals and those terminals only. Otherwise, you might be stuck holding the wrong end of the stick. All right, that's about it for today. In conclusion, this lecture took a close look at a three-terminal variable resistor known as a potentiometer. We examined the construction and behavior of a potentiometer, examined potentiometers in series and parallel relationships, and briefly inspected a couple real-world potentiometers using an ohmmeter. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.